Okay, my Loki's looking glorious in that fucking shadow. Steve's definitely been improving on shadows. But loading is taking its sweet time. There we go. Uh, please don't crash. Thank you. So, while everything is loading, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, all appropriate ages, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. Hope you're staying safe and healthy. So, two hours ago, Heart of Demos interim update 29.2.1 came available on console and I only just got back from work and then I had a system software update for the PS4 and then the 23 and a half gig update for this. So a lot of work, a lot of updating, but we're here now. We are here. <coughs> So, also, they're also remastering the textures and light maps game-wide. When the update goes live, Warframe will go from 41 gig to 22.6 after it has been fully downloaded again. So, yeah. Operator, I've run diagnostic regressions. All systems nominal. You don't need to thank me. Controller changes and fixes console specific notes. Fix Necromech UI and regular weapon crosshair overlapping when attempting to access the gear wheel via controller while in Necromech. Fix the ability to exit the shores in with a controller if a key binding is changed since start then becomes unbound. Fix the ability to quickly select the secondary emissive and energy colors when attempting to customize Warframe war or weapon color appearance using the controller D-pad. So yeah, as you can see, I'm going to be going through what is listed here. So you're going to hear a lot of my boring voice. And my drone is stuck in between my Velocipods and Vasco Cabats. Typical. So, <clears throat> a note on Tenogen Round 19 Part 1. While we did grab PC Update 29.2.1, the Round 19 Part 1, Tenogen items that launched with it will not be in this interim update. This is due to there being a very small window of time between the Round's release on PC and our plan to uh, send off to transfer and test the items. This process can take some time, so we are unable to give you a clear timeline for launch, but we will share more information once we are in the jump into the future with the high-tech style of the Oscura collection which includes the armor, the Sugatra, the Cyandana, plus Oscura skins for pistol, rifle, staff, throw blade, blow, bow, and longsword. All these can be purchased outside of the bundle collection separately. So, no Tenno Gen for console just yet. Which, honestly, let's be real. Tenno Gen for console has always been a diluted version of what they get on PC because they never actually give us all the Tenogen items that PC get on Tenogen. So, I couldn't really give two shits about Tenogen anymore. But yeah, no Tenogen and no Oscura bundle. No Oscura armor of any type. The Snake Necromex sigil, this distinctive serpentine sigil, adds venomous. Menace to any Necromech. As a bonus, a Warframe compatible Snake Sigil is included when purchasing the Sigil. Then you've got the Snake Void Rig skin. This skin revives the glory of the legendary old War Necromech Snake. You'll be able to find both the Sigil and the skin with the Necroloid Syndicate. For Platinum in the Necrolisk. For Platinum? Wait, 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 that's got to be a typo, right? For Platinum? Surely it should mean for standing, right? Let's investigate that. Velocipod K-Drive skins can be uh, equipped from uh, Brother.
So yeah, maybe actually with Tenno Gen 19 Part 1 being delayed, we'll actually get the full Tenno Gen for once on console. Who knows? I fucking sincerely doubt it though. I did a video way, way back about every Tenno Gen that has come out for console has never been the complete version that they get on PC and there's been no reason for that. There's been no excuse. So, yeah, maybe this will be the one time we actually get a full Tenogen collection. <clears throat> Hello. Are you requiring something? Man. Perhaps we can make a trade. Necromech pressure point, 25,000 standing. So that's for melee damage. Necromech intensify, ability strength. Necromech refuel, engine replenish. So three of the mods that I'm missing. Uh, wait a minute. For platinum in the necrolisk. Uh, I am sorry we were not able to. Oh, necromech embellishment. You are fucking joking. They are platinum based. Forty for a fucking sigil, and sixty for a rusty skin. I'm sorry, but nah. Piss. The fuck off. Nah. Nah, 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 nah. Be pragmatic in all aspects of life. Fuck you. Not buying either one of them. Jesus Christ. You can get... Let me guess. The fucking... Where's brother at? Grandmother had the measure of us all from the start. Oh, at least they're worth standing, Jesus. But 50,000 for a K Drive skin? And why is it upright? Why is it vertical? It should be horizontal. Is that just so you can see the underbelly? Yeah. As you wish. Who cares? See you around. That is fucking insane for the Necromex sigil and skin. Get the fuck! 100 platinum for the pet. Now, Zaku. Including AoE damage reduction as part of Zaku's passive. AoE damage will simply take a 25% damage reduction, 75% while the vast and time is active. Currently, Zaku's passive provides a chance that incoming projectiles will fail to hit the warframe at all instead of going right through but does not include any protection from AoE. For example, if a bombard shot a rocket at Zaku, the projectile itself would have a 25% chance to pass through them and deal no damage, but the explosion following would have the full effect. With this change, Zaku's passive grants them that damage reduction onto the AoE explosions. That's increased to 75% when Zaku is running around bare bones. In other words, fast than time. For his Whisper, we are making Void Damage true neutral by removing 50% Void Resistance of Void Damage on Clone Flesh and Fossilized Enemies, along with our request for Void Damage. Yada yada yada, Grasp of Load, increasing the speed at which enemies are disarmed so that it occurs earlier in the cast animation, also increasing the cast animation speed overall. Now increase the range from 8 to 15 meters. But that doesn't mean they've increased fire range, just the grasp range. <coughs> Currently, once Grasp of Loke is cast, you are locked with the weapons that were grabbed until the end of the ability's duration. This is obviously limiting if the ability was cast with undesired effect. To counteract this limitation, we are adding the option to recast with the added benefit of resetting the ability's duration and disarming a new set of enemies where and when desired. Increase the audible distance of Zaku's weapon sounds and grasp of light. As for the lost, deny adding synergy between deny and grasp of Lok that increases deny's damage output. 
increase the casting speed of deny more firepower slash faster removing the energy drain and keeping it a duration based ability for the vast and time wait a minute what yeah vast and time removing the energy drain and keeping it a duration based ability good why that wasn't the case for when it launched i have no fucking clue and the dog's going haywire because I think someone's just walked through the front door. But luckily it's all family here at the moment. Uh, uh, Zaku fixes. Fixed and I having poor hit detection on ragdoll or suspend enemies. Fixed targets affected by cues have inconsistent hit detection based on weapon type. Fixed a case of dealing self damage via Zata's Whisper. Fixed Zaku's base slow of the Vazen time being 50% instead 15% at level 2. Fix Saku's grass for locability, targeting phantom enemies in the ambulance boss fight. And then we all know about the uh, mark for death changes. Yeah, mark for death, mark for death. Uh, mark for death, Jesus Christ. Necromech changes. Necromex can no longer interact with ramparts or hack alarm towers in the plains of Eidolon. Tim never even bothered to try that, to be honest. This fixes a functionality loss when interacting with a rampart while in a Necromex and hacking issues specifically with the plains tower. <coughs> we have adjusted the Necromex drop tables to have a mix of mods in the Necroloid Syndicate, as well as on Necromex outright. Remove Necromex vitality refuel, intensify and pressure point from drops, and move to, as you just saw, they're now with Lloyd. Currently, there is a three minute cooldown on every use of the Necromex Summon. We change cooldown behavior of the Necromex Summon to reflect the following. If the player's Necromex is still active, then Necromex Summon only has a 10 second cooldown. Summon it this way will move the Necromex to the player's desired position, but not restore its health shields or energy. If the player's Necromex is destroyed, then the Summon has a three minute cooldown and will have everything refilled. Reduce the Necromex Shock and Iron Ability Sound Loop. Change the Deflection mod name to Redirection, since we use Redirection for Max Shield mods. And a whole bunch of fixes, which they didn't list. Sepulchrum change and fixes. Decrease the unguided flight time of the alt fire on launch from 0 0.06 to 0 0.03 seconds. Decrease the unguided flight time of the alt fire smoothing from 1 second to 0.4 seconds. This makes all fire projectiles start to hone in on their targets faster and curve more acutely towards them. Decrease all fire arm in delay from 0.2 seconds to 0.01. This decreases the time between being able to lock onto additional targets after the first. Increase max lock distance from 60 meters to 80. Increase loose lock distance from 80 meters to 100. Fix cases of the sepulchrum alt fire not properly targeting enemies. And then there's like what I mentioned in a few other streams where there's a reduction in the batches of rail jack resource costs that are across the board required to yield the helmet secretions. PC got like a message or a script. I remember I got one, but a bunch of us on console got it by accident in one of the community streams. I'm not sure if I still have it here. No, I don't. I just have your action after consequences. Yeah, but apparently if we did get it earlier than anticipated, because when some of us got it, it was only meant to be for PC. If we got it then, we got it then. We don't get it again now. Don't be greedy. <clears throat> to give players more options for the bile secretion, we are adding the following components as feedable to the helmet to create bile. Antiserum fragment times 900, Javelot capacitor times 7, now coordinates times 65, General helmet changes. Helmet now shows you a lock status when you sit in the chair with Warframe, whose ability you've already subsumed. Added helmet ability videos on hover of the respective abilities. Disabled all those transmissions while in the screen. There is now an incomplete tab on the helmet to show you which abilities you have not subsumed and a whole bunch of fixes. Oh. Well, before we go and have a gander at that, let's just go and say hello and goodbye. I wonder, 
What exactly did Grandmother cook up to help bring this reconciliation about? Probably best to see you soon. Yep, no worries, Kaylee. <clears throat> Where's my coffee at? Everything takes so long to load up. Is this going to be? How's this? Go, is this going to be going to PS5 and Xbox X? How's that going to work? Are we going to be able to transfer our data over? So let's have a look. Okay, maybe I'm... Oh, that's what it means. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, yeah. Alright, fair enough. <clears throat> Alright, so anti-serum injector fragments. Javlock capacitors. Yeah, all right, so yeah, that kind of garbage. <coughs> By the way, is there that flower that, is that flower still? No, all right. Cause that flower up in the top, the orange one, was briefly stuck behind the wall. All right, so now it's out then. All right, that's good. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Only 15? Damn, son. So, uh, conservation fishing changes. <coughs> My throat's as dry as a bag of sand. My esophagitis is fucking killing me, literally. An accumulation of community and developer feedback have brought forth a handful of avocare changes and fixes. Everything in orders, operator? Is that a pun? Hmm. I will attempt to bypass this fault. A marker will now appear when spotting conservation scat through the trank scope or if a lure is equipped. Avocare is now correctly flying circles around the spawn call area once they reach it instead of hovering directly above it. Diversified ambient avocare encounters so that they can either be encountered flying around an area or low down perched on the ground. Previously, ambient avocares were only found flying high in the sky, which could easily be missed to the busy eyes. Increase the spawn chance of ambient avocare encounters, improvements towards avocare animations. Improved spawn rate of fish in the Cambrian Drift to be closer to pass free roam behavior. We welcome your feedback if even further changes are needed. Yeah, can you stop having animals still uh, once they're tranked go under fucking ground? Reduce the number of fish parts required per daughter exocrine assignment from three down to two. This brings daughter's economy in line with sun where the max number of requested parts is two. And a whole bunch of fixes. Why don't they ever say what the full whole bunch of fixes are? General Weapons Trumner, remove punch through on the Alt-5 projectile. <sighs> Quasis, increased heavy attack projectiles from 35 to 76. Reduce horizontal spread of projectiles. Zymus, decrease projectile spread of multi-shot projectiles, increase projectile speed from 59 to 79. Character shader changes. We made significant enhancements to probe based lighting, as I just saw that at the very beginning. My lucky looking fresh. The results of this are dynamic objects receive. Receive what? Better light quality lighting and metals are more responsive. Additionally, objects should now look more grounded in their environments. Yeah, 
Well, Loki looking pretty sweet. General changes. Scintillant in the common tier of the Damus Bounty now has correct rarity weights within that tier. Previously, it was applying its rare teardrop chance within the common tier. It is now a 18% drop chance. I've got 10 or so scintillant spare for whatever gets dropped next, so I couldn't care less. Hopefully that is enough, because I can't be bothered to find any more. Remove the gas stance effect from the Deimos Jugular Shoot and Bone Glaives. Because <coughs> it was unintended, it should only be administering slash. Reduce drop chance of failure pod blueprint for Damus Juggernaut to 5%. Why, why, why nerf? Why are you nerfing? The Awakening Cinematic now supports translated subtitles. Added Ether Daggers to Samaras offerings for players who might have sold theirs. Ether Daggers? Ether Daggers, aren't those? Oh yeah, because the whole play style business. That's not happening this year. Ether Daggers. There you are. What were you at again? What were your stats? I know I haven't used you in a while, so... Status 30, crit 10, crit multiply... All right, so it's a status-based duel. Hmm. Huh. Don't really care. Better weapons out there than Ether Daggers. Improvements towards operator eye textures and shading to look less flat. Look with your special eyes. Alright. I uh, can't really see. I've got this bloody visor in the way. It's not bad, but I still like my tier Atmos Oculus for this setup. Not that you spend many much time looking at your operator anyway. <coughs> the Sprawl Avocator is the last Avocator I need in terms of floofs. Uh, blueprints and Intrati tokens will now appear closer to the top of the end of mission reward screens. General polish and cleanup of sounds in the arsenal to remove unintended sounds. Respective rifle slash shotgun skins can now be equipped on primary kit guns, including deluxe shotgun skins. Tomb finger and rattle guts are rifles and catch me as a shotgun glazes. Gazes neither and it's classified as a beam weapon. Okay, can it have an optical skin then? A full list of fixes will be posted in the update thread. Here are just some of the highlights. Fix an issue where the swap polarity functionality would be broken on weapons that had only ever done no op polarizations. Fix the quasis leaving you unarmed after using heavy attacks. Fix some look link issues and diorama issues with the new companions. Uh, fix Juggler's mod set cooldown not being present. Fix battle cause all fire damage. All right, so a lot of weapon and frame adjustments slash fixes and then it ends with and much more so yeah that is the full that is the brief run through and yeah as I said no Tenno Gen on console not that I have any clue what we're legitimately gonna get with Tenogen because on console we've all been always been missing something compared to what the PC got. Either way. Either way. Where's my Loki at? Oh, there you are. So yeah, that is the new interim update that came out today. 
I'm now going to go have dinner. And I shall see you all later.